Good morning, Red Rocks and those watching at home. Uh, Merry Christmas. That's great. And today we're going to celebrate uh, the life and career of Pastor Jack. And so we welcome everyone today. Well, let's stand up to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare in room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. you are God with us through the hard times of our lives and the good times and we thank you for that Lord Jesus 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 there's just something about that name
you, God, that at this time of life we can really celebrate who you are. I'm grateful that you were given the name Jesus, Savior. Lord, I pray right now, wherever we are at in our lives, that you would help us to really turn to you and lean on you because you have been faithful throughout the years. You're the same today as you were yesterday and will be tomorrow, and we can take that to the bank. The rest of the world may change. There might be so many things going on in our world today, God. But we thank you, Lord, that you are the same, and we can rest on that. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Let me hear you, church. Consider What joy shall 
it. Amen? All right. You may be seated. Should get together. We met at the uh, Chick fil A in the food court over at Park Meadows Mall. And um, if you know Jack, you know that's just how he does things. Chick fil A is a part of Jack's life, uh, very, very clearly. And uh, so when we met there, I thought, okay, well, this is just practical. It's halfway between us, and it's an easy place for us to meet. And that was my thinking. It was just practical. And it was. It was the practicality of it, was, of course, in Jack's mind as well. And then we got there, and, and uh, we, we stood in line at the Chick-fil-A, and, and then we got to the front, and, and uh, my MO is always to find out what your host is going to eat before you decide what you're going to eat so that you don't order something more expensive. Well, Jack ordered a number one, which if you know Chick-fil-A, that's the basic chicken sandwich. Nothing on it, just pickles and chicken and bread, right? And I was like, okay, well, I guess that's what I'm ordering. I didn't really think anything of it. but. But I tell that story because you know Jack, and Jack is, if nothing else, practical first. And that practicality is, I don't need a bunch of frills, I don't need a bunch of other stuff, I'm practical first. And that became a theme in terms of our relationship from that day forward. I didn't know it at the time, that's what I was witnessing, but that's who Jack is, and you know that, um, knowing Jack as well. Um, he's practical first. But... Second story might uh, betray that a little bit. Uh, a few years later, we were putting on our very first fall kickoff festival, and it wasn't great. I, I will admit that we were we had we were practicing for future greatness, um, and, and so we were sitting in the absolute boiling, baking sun of a late August Sunday afternoon, and um, there were like nine kids I think showed up that year and all of our volunteers were sitting out sweating and we were just trying to keep everybody hydrated. I'm looking at Stan Gelsma who is um, standing guard over one of the the inflatables, this big bounce house that is a um, that's an obstacle course that, that runs about 50 feet long. Um, two, two sides to it so you could run a race through the obstacle course. Hold on to that thought, that'll come back in a second. And I'm thinking to myself, Stan's gonna collapse and die here if we don't do something. So, uh, but faithful, those, those, those people that, that showed up to help out that day were extremely faithful and we were grateful for that. But um, as the day progressed and it was, um, uh, became abundantly clear that that was as good as it was gonna get, um, people started saying, hey, you and Jack ought to have a race through this obstacle course. <laughs> and I thought, there's no way Jack is gonna agree to that. So I said, okay, and lo and behold, Jack did agree to the race. So I thought, oh, okay, I am 23 years his junior, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm obviously no physical prime specimen, but I thought 23 years I've got on him, this is gonna be pretty easy, I'm thinking. So we got, our, we got set at the end of that obstacle course. Now this is a bounce house that's made for kids, you have to keep that in mind. And, um, we got set at the beginning and they, you know, they said, on your marks, get set, go. And I was crushing him. I mean, I, it was great. Single greatest athletic event I've ever participated in. <laughs> R right up until the point at which you had to go through this tube out of inflatable material. And I chose the wrong method of going through that tube. I tried to go crouched over on my feet and I got stuck and I could not extricate myself, and Jack won. <laughs> yes. And what I learned from that about Jack is that don't, don't be lulled into a false sense of Jack is practical only. Jack is up for whatever. And he is, and he always has been. And you've seen some of the pictures out there. Um, Joe is also apparently up for whatever, but... Um, but he's up for whatever. So he's practical, but he's also into whatever you want to do. He'll go do that with you. And that's Jack, too. He'll do it with you. Um, just a neat, kind of a neat thing about him. Um, and then the last thing that I want to share is, of course, and you all experienced this as well, um, back when Jack had his heart issues. Um, Jack wasn't feeling well, and so he decided, you know, I think I'm going to go home. And, I'm, you know, he was saying, it feels like maybe it's the flu or something like that. And I was thinking, yeah, it's just the flu. And so he went home and uh, 
and then uh, Julie later discovered him crawling across the kitchen floor. Um, and then they went to the emergency room and found out that he had a major blockage in his widowmaker artery. And um, the rest is history. But what I learned from that is that Jack is tough. He is tough as nails. And he isn't going to make himself the center of attention at all. And so if he has to sacrifice in order for him not himself not to be the center of attention, he's going to do that, whatever the cost. And, um, and that's, that to me is Jack. He's practical, but he's up for whatever, and he's tough as nails, so don't cross him. <laughs> well, I've given you some time to think and to process what you want to share. Anything that you want to share, feel free to come on up. If you can't, like I said, if you can't come up and share, we will bring a mic to you. Anybody? I do have a sermon prepared, so it's either you talk or I talk. So, Joe, come on up. Hello, everyone. Um, pleasure to be here this morning and celebrate Dad, uh, remembering uh, his legacy, though saying that is weird because it almost sounds like a eulogy, but he's sitting right there. <laughs> <laughs> but that to also say to a very serious point that uh, this is just the next step, this is the next chapter. And so it's a pleasure to remember the last one. And I remember so much of it because I was there for quite a bit. <laughs> I remember back when uh, you uh, planted back in 93, Ken Carroll, and uh, at the ranch house, two weeks at the ranch house, and then over to the daycare center and, and in the strip mall. I remember those during college days and then the merger, of course. and. Boy, it's, it's just amazing to see how the church has, has grown and changed, and and uh, then to have the uh, honor of being on staff with Dad and Matt and, uh, for six years. So that was an amazing experience for me, uh, and especially an amazing experience for me as uh, Jack's son. Um, uh, so there are two things that I wanted to uh, remember about uh, two particular things that I, I treasure uh, memories about Dad's legacy here is uh, one of them, I had the opportunity to be on the district leadership team and it was my good friend and mentor, uh, Jeff Foote, uh, who's a pastor up in Longmont these days. Um, he, uh, he, he came up to me once, this was after uh, I think a district board of ministerials. So that's the, the body of pastors who interview uh, people who want to become licensed as pastors in the Evangelical Free Church. And Dad, for a number of years, sat on the D-Bomb, is what they call it, D-Bomb Committee. Uh, so he knows his stuff. He knows his stuff. But uh, uh, Jeff told me that he had a reputation for being really hard on the interviewees. And I was, I was kind of flabbergasted by that. You know, it's kind of like, you know, I, I think I know my dad, but don't see him in other contacts. So I, the next time I saw Dad... I asked him, like, well, what is that about? Like, what's this reputation about you being, like, tough as nails in these uh, um, interviews? And he looked at me, and he said, and I'm, I might be conflating this with another story, so forgive me, but the point is still the same. He looked at me, he's like, well, you know, these seminary people get in here, and, uh, like, I want to know, like, what I'm asking them is, uh, you know, high schooler comes up to you and is asking, uh, you know, how can I be saved? And these guys just fresh out of seminary will say, you know, they'll go into like lordship salvation and all of these doctrines of soteriology and deep doctrinal truths, which are all great, but that's not what you bring to a high schooler. You know, what, what I'm looking for is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And that stuck with me because uh, as much as dad knows his stuff, which he does, I can tell you, um, he knows the depths of theology uh, I always really appreciated that he was able to keep the main thing the main thing and that what makes the simple gospel truth the basic truth, what makes it basic is not that it's unimportant or forgettable even though sometimes we come to it like that. Um, what makes it basic is the thing that we keep coming back to. It's where we live. It's where we move. Um, and so I always appreciated that dad had that perspective and keeps the main thing the main thing. Um, the other story that I remember in particular uh, well, one of many, but uh, for purposes of this was I had the opportunity to go visiting with you uh, a number of years ago as part of, and it was actually at the time part of my seminary training, but um, 
it was a pleasure to go and do that because that's a side of your ministry and I think kind of an, a typically unseen part of what your legacy in ministry is, is visiting shut-ins, visiting people who uh, can't make it out to church, can't make it out to the community. And I remember each of those three, well, four people, a couple was one of them, but uh, uh, visiting those people and seeing uh, that bringing them communion, bringing them fellowship, bringing them uh, yourself, and you brought Jesus with you, and that you could see in their faces. Uh, and I will remember those uh, for as long as I have a mind to remember them. It was just a, a really powerful experience, and it was obvious that it was so meaningful to them in that place. And I think as much as what happens here on Sunday morning is as much part of your legacy, maybe even more so that. Um, and uh, uh, the, the impact that you've had on people's lives and uh, is just uh, immeasurable, I think, especially in that realm. So anyway, those are just two of memories that I thought of and glad to be able to be here and share them with you. Amy. We'll go from one worship leader to the other. And uh, I had the privilege <clears throat> of hearing Jack when I first got out of seminary and I moved to uh, Colorado, I came with uh, the Larsons and Pitzers to visit their church. And the first thing I noted was the guy up front didn't look like him, but he sounded exactly like Dr. John Wex, who was my very favorite all-time seminary professor at Multnomah. And I think what I noted was his detail to the Word of God and how he exegeted the word of God so accurately. And being an older lady new out of seminary, I was paying very close attention because I was looking for a church that would stay true to the word of God. And uh, Jack has always, uh, as long as I've known you, been very faithful to the word of God, and I appreciate that. It's not easy to find nowadays, to be honest with you. And then second of all, uh, in my interview for the position, of worship leader, uh, I noted he was just so mild-mannered and so gentle. I thought he'd grill me, and so I was prepared, you know, with all these theological answers and stuff, and he was so, so peaceful and so gentle and so calm. Everybody else, you know, had questions for me, but uh, he was, he kind of sat back and listened, and I noted that, that Jack listens, and I appreciated that so much. But I think probably the thing, there are two things that really stand out to me about you, Jack, and that is your, your loyalty and faithfulness. Um, uh, I noted right away, of course, there's really a big problem when you're the new worship leader and you find out the pastor's wife is on the worship team. Because you're thinking, there's no way out of this. If she's really lousy, I have to put up with her. But we became instant friends, and I discovered that I have a sister of another mother, and that's really what it's been like is having another sister. And I know, Patty, you feel the same way. It's just that, you know, instant camaraderie. But I've learned a lot about Jack through, through uh, Sharon, and not, not all the secrets, Jack, don't worry. But I've, what I have learned is kind of how they met and his courting of Sharon and how faithful and loyal he is to a fault, and uh, I mean, he's so faithful that the last time we had this big blizzard, I uh, called Sharon, and it, I mean, it was a whiteout, and I go, so are you and Jack enjoying a fire? No, Jack's at the church working. Nobody else was here, but Jack was working at the church, and very loyal to his calling, and, and loyal to the people around him. The second thing that I really noticed is, being older and going to seminary, it's really fun coming out of class and listening to all these young guys who all say, we're going to be senior pastors next year. And you're going, they don't know what's up ahead. But they're sitting there just comparing and, and arguing over the stupidest things. But none of them talked about going to visit the shut-ins or going to the hospital when it was inconvenient. And... Actually, to be honest with you, I trained as a chaplain, so I did my residency at Swedish, and I remember the day, and I told Jack about this 
when a woman who was the bulwark of her church, pastor wouldn't come, and she died. And um, he wouldn't come to visit her. Now it was a Sunday, but even later, he didn't come. And yet what I've seen in Jack is that he will be there if it's three in the morning, if it's six in the morning, if it's five in the afternoon and he's about to sit down to dinner. Jack is one of the rare cases nowadays of someone that will go to the bedside of someone and be with them and be with the shut-in. And truly, that is a shepherd. And I am grateful for that, Jack. You've taught me much by that. So thank you for the privilege of working with you. I echo those thoughts, um, Emmy. It, it, is a, it is a rare thing that a shepherd is in the pulpit um, in today's society. We got a lot of rock stars. We need a lot more pastors. Do you want me to come to you? Are you coming up here? You're coming up. Okay. All right. Forty and Jan are coming. <clears throat> I'll start here. I wrote down just a few things here, but uh, first of all, when we first met Jack, we were trying to find a church from downtown Denver. And they says, oh, well, you can merge with this Ken Carl church. It's only 50 miles to your <laughs> south. And everybody fainted in the church, you know, and they says, no, we can do it. We can drive people there and everything. So we get in it. We didn't know we were meeting in a daycare. And so we meet in a daycare and then we turn around and when we merge, where do we meet? In a daycare. We were meeting in a daycare. So we were going back and forth from one daycare to the other. And Jack and I believe it was Ron, but I'm not sure, says, why don't you do announcements? And I said, nope, I'm not getting up in front of people and do announcements. Jack says, oh yeah, you can do it. You can do it. So I jumped up and I've been doing it for 20 years, Jack. I can't believe it. You know, my dates may be off because I can't remember what I had for breakfast, so never mind that. And I remember Matt talking about Chick-fil-A. Once in a while we go out for dinner, maybe after Awana or something like that. Jack always got his favorite, a naked hamburger. That means nothing on it. So we've been having a lot of fun with that one, so go ahead. And a naked burrito if we were in the right place. Right. <laughs> My story of Jack is, um, well, he was always, he's always there when you're getting any kind of surgery. I don't even remember the surgery I was getting, but I wasn't where I was supposed to be. Forney didn't even know where I was. Jack figured it out and got, got over to see me. Um, I think it was some, my foot surgery or something, but he's never missed. And uh, that we love you for, Jack. But the fun thing was he happened to be in Minneapolis at the same time that we were. And we got a chance to go out to dinner together at a little lakeside um, restaurant. And we took him down to Excelsior Bay on Lake Minnetonka to a place called Licks ice cream shop. Well, I don't remember how old Jackson was, but uh, he introduced him to licorice ice cream. And so they both ate this black licorice ice cream and loved it together. And I'll always remember that. Um, there's many, many, many wonderful things in my heart. Thank you, Jack. And another thing I want to say is Jack, like say, he's been very faithful. And when we'd go to a hospital or something to visit somebody, Jack would be there. We went to somebody's house, Jack was there. So he's always around. We appreciate that, Jack, so much. Thank you. Thank you, Forney and Jan. Christine, come on up. Uh, 
Um, about a year ago, I remember watching the dedica baby dedication ceremony that Jack did for his youngest granddaughter, and it was so beautiful. And I realized, oh no, we never did a baby dedication, and our child is almost two. So, so I, um, I felt kind of sheepish. Like, I don't know how we could have forgotten this while we were figuring out how to be new parents. <laughs> um, but we did, and so I, I asked Jack, could we do a baby dedication for our almost two-year-old? Because her birthday is coming up, and it's on a Sunday, and my family is going to be in town, and Jack said, sure, let's do it. He didn't, didn't scold us or anything, like, how could you have forgotten this? <laughs> all, this all this time has passed. He just said, sure, and worked with us on the ceremony and made it really special. Um, Usually with a baby dedication, you, you just hold the baby in your arms and, and do the little ceremony, but by that time, we were working with a squirmy toddler, and Jack just, just rolled with it. <laughs> and um, that's such a special memory, and, and thank you so much for doing that with us. Lisa, come on up. <laughs> now you got people fighting over it. No, you got to go. Kids, you got to be on camera. Well, so two stories. One, some it reminded me of. Um, so teaching the truth, of course, is very important. And so when we were looking for a church, I wanted a place that would teach about creation and not just kind of go over it as you know, we'll talk about it if you talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, but other than that, we're not going to deal with the subject of creation because it could be so controversial. And But here, the very first VBS we go to was Ocean Commotion, and it was um, all answers in Genesis, and every VBS since then has been answers in Genesis. And so I was telling the girls, I was like, I think this might be a good church. They they believe in creation and Genesis 1-1, um, in a six-day account, and we were just so, so excited. And then we're sitting in church one Sunday, and Forney, where'd you guys go? Oh, there you are. Forney gets up to talk about the senior ministry was going to go to the, uh, what's the history museum called? Natural history, whatever. Lots of lies in that history museum, but you know which place I'm talking about. Anyway, so they were going to go, and the little flyer that was talking about it said something about summit and i were trying to remember the years and we can't but it was some ridiculous evolution amount of years like 400 billion years ago whatever and it was our pamphlet that was in our church bulletin and i was like oh no summit like i thought that they you know didn't believe in evolution and oh no and so i go back and i'm all kind of shaky because we're really new to the church and i don't really know pastor jack well at all and I go um I needed to talk to you about something and so I showed him the flyer and I was like um I just really have an issue that you're okay with the billions of years and he goes oh, that's a typo and he just went back and fixed it he's like that is not he goes that's from the museum that's what they believe that's not what God says however he did it I was like Oh, whew, that was a make it or break it for us. It really was because it was important to me. But one of the coolest things for me personally is being a, a single mom. Um, their dad left right before we started coming here, literally like that week. And, um, and so I didn't know, like we needed to find somewhere where they would be okay with a single mom and would welcome us. And... Um, One of the most important things you did is whenever Josh, their dad, came and visited or anything, you have always remembered his name and shook his hand. And we, he and I talked about it just the other day, and it means so much to him. No church has ever remembered his name. He's always just been a nobody there. And it's important to me that he's loved. And you feel very very loved and remembered and valued 
and he doesn't sign that very, very often. So you have loved my family, and and whenever he comes through the door for Awana or anything, it's always, hey, Josh, how you doing? And I just can see him light up. He just, it's a treasure to me that you do that for him. So that's all. Thank you. Who's going to be first? Okay, Grant and Donna. Um, no, I can also vouch for the fact that, that Jack has a definite heart for those who are hurting, um, those who are sick, shut-ins. There would be times when I might be at a hospital visiting someone, and in would come Jack and often even Sharon as well. Um, and I had kind of a, a funny little story. I don't know. If it, I, th I think Sharon will remember it. I don't know if Jack will or not. But um, for those of you who remember... Uh, Juanita House, who was a member of this church for a long time and many years, but she's no longer with us. Um, she was in the hospital at Swedish, and I was getting ready to go visit her the next day. And um, that night I had a horrible, horrible nightmare. Um, Juanita did not have one leg. She had had it amputated, and she had a prosthetic, but when she was ill, of course, she was pretty much wheelchair-bound, and she was, you know, relying on the wheelchair at that point. Sharon's smiling, so I think she remembers. <laughs> um, and so I had this nightmare that I had gone to Swedish and that um, the hospital caught on fire while I was in her room with her. And I was panicking because I couldn't do the elevator, and I didn't know how I was going to get her out of the room. Didn't know, you know, I knew I couldn't get her downstairs. And I remember just crying and being frantic and, and to um, lift up Juanita here, too. She, she said in this dream, which I think she would have done, is, no, you go. You leave me. You go. You have Grant. You have the girls. You go. So I had had this nightmare. Well, the next day when I went to Swedish, I got on the elevator, and the fire alarms went off. And, and I was in there with another gentleman that worked there, and um, I said, is that the fire alarm? And he said, yeah, it is. And he said, but, but it might be a false alarm. So I went on up and went into the floor, and the, and the people at the desk said, well, they're, they're checking it out. And so I went into Juanita's room, but she wasn't there. They had taken her somewhere, and nobody really knew where she was at the moment. So I thought, well, I guess I'll leave and come back later. I was walking down the stairs, and I met Sharon and Jack coming in. And um, I said, well, I just went to see Juanita. She's not in the room, but maybe we can all wait together. So we went back to that floor, and there was a little sitting area. And we were up probably on about the top floor, and it's, it was up there. And um, this fire alarm was still going off. And we're sitting there, and the more we're sitting there, I'm starting to get worried. The people at the reception desk said, you can't use the stairwell now. They had said we couldn't even go into the stairs. And so I was uh, sitting there and thinking about 911 and how people wanted to vacate the building, and other people said, no, stay, you'll be fine. And I'm like, is this very smart of us? And, but Jack is so obedient. He will not break rules. Sharon and I were seriously considering taking those stairs, getting out of the hospital, but Jack is so honorable, and he was not going to go anywhere. And, of course, Sharon and I were not going to leave Jack. So we all sat, and I guess we, we would have all burned together, but it, it ended up being a, a false alarm. So, <laughs> um, But I, you know, I had served on some committees and uh, was with Jack on those, and then um, when I had the interim worship team position, what I most appreciated was your detail and your organization, because I kind of like that stuff. So Matt, you got some really big shoes to fill, because Matt was, or Jack was very organized and detailed. I appreciated that. You know, almost, uh, I think it was almost 20 years ago, um, Donna and I and our family were going to one of these mega churches off of West Bowles, and we were becoming uh, kind of disillusioned with uh, the feel of the, of the church and um, the kind of impersonality um, of the people there. 
and our friends uh, Rich and Deanna Oster were feeling the same way and uh, we were talking about maybe finding a smaller church where uh, we could have some personal relationships and uh, Rich and Deanna had visited here and uh, we talked to them and they said you know we went there one Sunday and the next Sunday we went back and the pastor knew our name you ought to come check this out this is something different so we did and uh, Jack knows our name and knows all of our family and uh, can recite um, I think most of our grandkids too maybe some that he hasn't even met but um, so yeah we liked uh, we like that and uh, we like the feel of the church and uh, what we're all trying to do here and um, um, we came uh, like it was like the one year after the merger so I don't know how many years ago that was, but it's quite a long time. But I always appreciated Jack, uh, the practical side of Jack, and um, I don't know if you all know it, but uh, you know he does a lot of the handyman work around the church. Um, he repairs his own cars. He, uh, one time I think uh, you all went on a trip to Kansas City to see your parents, and he was telling me how he replaced his axles and in the driveway in somebody's house in Kansas City and I was like wow what kind of pastor is this um, he's my kind of guy um, so I just uh, really want to uh, tell you how much I appreciate both of you um, I was in the hospital maybe 10 years ago and uh, and I don't know how they found out I was there but uh, it was Super Bowl Sunday here comes Jack and Sharon. All of a sudden they appear, and um, I appreciated that. So, um, uh, you know, uh, church plants, um, I think most of them don't uh, last uh, 20 plus years, um, especially with the founding, uh, with the founding pastor. So. I just uh, want to applaud his uh, perseverance and his dedication to, uh, to the leading that the Holy Spirit, you know, brought him to. And he has really accomplished something that uh, most people can't say they did. Um, he had a lot of help, you know, from, uh, from people around him and the guidance of uh, the Holy Spirit. And, uh, just want to applaud that. Thanks. Real quick, too. I could be here all day talking about Sharon because we've had so many fun times together, and she is the fun one. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> and, and just like Matt said earlier, she's also tough as nails. Don't ever cross her. So. <laughs> Yeah, if you get Paul up here, he'll never stop, so. <laughs> Not on my mask. I don't do this to all the congregants, just one. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I have a few simple words for Jack in that um, I just love Jack. <laughs> I just love you and um, appreciate you and have always appreciated how much you care for people. Um, so thank you. Um, I would actually like to focus a little bit more on Sharon um, because I know that behind the pastor <clears throat> has to be, well, maybe not me, but an amazing woman. Um, and so I've just always been so appreciative of you and so thankful for you. Um, I have always struggled of what it means to be a pastor's wife. Um, I do not fit the mold very well. Um, but you have always shown and mentored and encouraged me to just be me. And I really appreciate that. And um, thank you. Thank you for um, being you because it gives me the freedom to be me. So thank you very much. Okay, Paul. And then Joe. We may never get out of here. 
Well, when Anna and I had moved back from Germany after being there for many years and uh, moved into our house here in the area, uh, we checked out several different churches and uh, we came to Red Rocks and I, I thought, man, they really start on time because everything was going and you know, the only seats available were out in the old fellowship hall toward the front in the middle of a pew. So we had to make our way in. I mean, big spectacle, right? And then I realized Jack's bringing his sermon to a close. We must have gotten the time wrong. And so, uh, yeah, it was, he was, you know, did the benediction and we were finished. And so Jack came to meet us and uh, introduced ourselves and said, apparently, we, we messed up on the time. And so Jack says, well, you're welcome to stay for the next service. And we actually had a family event that we couldn't stay for. I said, well, we already know the ending, so I, I, we'll come back next week, you know. <laughs> but we came back the next week, and as Grant said, Jack meets us and says, welcome back, Paul and Anna. And he's always been extremely gracious, and I'm in 10 years now, I've observed him knowing people's first names when they've only visited one time. And Jack, that's uh, quite an honor. And Jack has always uh, made me feel extremely um, welcome and invited me to join in on Summit, the regional meetings of the Evangelical Free Church, and the, uh, even the interviews for the uh, ordination service for new pastors and uh, it's been a treat to share in your ministry, Jack. I think um, my main whole job all the years we've been here is to irritate Jack. We've done things like put in his water that he holds under here or hide his notes. Um, he keeps that little black book real close to him now because of that. But, we dress up like women together. Well, that, <laughs> that is something that's been documented by pictures, I guess, so we're in trouble. But that is one of my stories that I have to tell about Jack is trying to get him to do this little play that my Aunt Juanita had made us do. But anyway, um, we uh, were trying to get into the women's conference and we were dressing up as women coming to church. And the only problem was Jack and I were out in the back getting our dresses on. <laughs> and it, it, he had a dress that I, he didn't even socks with, but if you've ever seen Jack's legs, they're about as hairy as a, a bear. And so I go, are you kidding me? You're really going up there like that? <laughs> and he said, yeah, I guess we have to. <laughs> We're in trouble. But um, also, uh, on the more serious side of things, um, I've been under a lot of different pastors, and, and Jackie is a true shepherd, if all of you know that. But um, his heart is there for the Lord, and that is one thing that has always impressed me. Thank you, Jack. I don't know whether to tell the serious or the funny first, but I'll go with funny so I can end with serious. I was in uh, the office one day, and Jack was here, and a, a lady came into the office, and I was busy getting ready for a, a women's function, I guess it was, and so I was making copies and stuff, but he was uh, talking to her, and I think she needed help, and so he had, I think, you gave her um, some gift cards or something, but then, uh, and you talked with her, and I was trying not to listen and do my thing, you know. But then later, I, uh, Jack says, and Patty, would you, would you mind coming over here and praying with us? And I'm like, what, what? So I said, oh, sure. So I come over, and I never met this lady either, and I don't think Jack had either, and I go, okay, let's hold hands. And Jack was like, oh, oh. And he turned, he turned beet red, and I was like, I don't know why he said that, but that's just what we do. But, and we continued to pray, and it, it was a, really was a touching moment the way he, you don't realize, I had been to church quite a bit, how many people just come in off the street, and Jack um, is so kind, and 
he talks to them and and tries to help them and he, and he always prays with them but he was as red as I had ever seen him just because I said sure and I came over and we all just held hands but it's it's a it's a neat ministry you'd have to I'm sure you all know about it but to witness it it, it really is something the other thing I wanted to you guys know I'm kind of funny, but I don't do serious very good. So I did want to say, um, in 2007, when my father passed away, and I'm not even sure if you met him before that happened, but I was so surprised. They live in Kansas, and on the day of the funeral, I looked up, and Jack was at my father's funeral. And it meant so much to me. I can't even tell you. I was, I was so blown away. It's a long drive. And it was in the middle of an ice storm. Not even half of the farmers came because it was so, it was so icy and really bad out. And we really didn't want him to come. I, I didn't think to call Jack and tell him not to come because I didn't know he was. And it just meant so much to me, to me that you would take the time. And really, it was a dangerous day. And there he was, my pastor, shepherding me, and it meant a lot. And so thank you, Jack. And then there's Sharon, but I don't want to get into it. Okay. I will get into it. No, I will not. And, and Matt, I plan on hugging you every week now. Okay. Um, so um, we'll, we'll have Chris wrap us up. Jack, I would do most anything for you, but I'm not able to get up there and be. <laughs> so one of the most important people in my life, my mom, absolutely adored you. Um, she had, had gone forward at an old church revival. She lived in Stratton, Colorado, and they went out to the, the creek, and she was baptized, but later she told me it meant nothing to her. She didn't understand what being baptized and all that was but then she started coming to church with me and she like i say just adored you i remember one time when she was in the hospital and of course you were on your way and they came in and asked her if she would like a clergy person to come in and she said oh no my pastor's on the way <laughs> so to you just know that you were what she understood as being a pastor. And then she decided she wanted to be baptized because she really understood what it meant now. And she was a smoker, so she decided she would be baptized when she quit smoking. And she worked hard at it. And she worked and she worked and she worked. And finally, there were four months that she had not had a cigarette. So she decided that's when she wanted you to baptize her. And that was one of the most amazing times in my life to watch my mom being baptized by you. And I just thank you for all the times you've come to the hospital, even two weeks ago when they wouldn't let you in. We did it by phone, so I just appreciate that. And I told you a couple weeks ago, one of the things that I appreciate and will always remember is how you stand at the pulpit with your Bible in your hand. That's where your words come from, and that's how you demonstrate it. So I just thank you for that, and thank you, Sharon, for all you've done, how all joy you've brought to all of us so many times, and just knowing that you're my sister in Christ has been amazing. So thank you both very much. Thanks, Chris. My name is Margaret, and my husband and I are church neighbors. And I want to tell you how blessed this church is to have Jack as a pastor. I watch every Sunday morning at 7.30, 7-ish, Jack parks his car, and I go, this church is so blessed. This man is wonderful, and he has been a great neighbor. This church has been a great neighbor to us, and I welcome you with open arms. Big shoes to fill. 
but also Jack's been a good friend of my husband John they talk in the field out here and also I work at Swedish and I want you to know I've seen Jack and he's a true shepherd and good to all you people here that aren't here today and are at home you're very blessed to have had him well thank you for all of those um those reminiscences and um kind words for jack and i'm sure he would he will thank you too as well and he's going to in just a second um, we're going to give him some time to, to to rebut no that's not what he's coming up for um but I do want to just say that this is um, this is a transition. This isn't a um, this isn't an end. Um, the McCullis will still be here. Um, we want them here, and so they will still be involved as much as they um, can be involved, or as much as they want to be involved. Um, and um, so so. We look forward to continuing the fellowship with them long term. But this is a transition, yeah. Um, one of the passages that has kind of become the theme for this transition for uh, this team that has been planning all of this celebration for Jack is uh, comes out of Isaiah 43. And it says, this is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snucked like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? What a great, joyful, hopeful passage that even in transition, God is always doing a new thing. And this may be new just for Jack. It's certainly new for us, but it, uh, for Sharon too. Um, but, it, it, but it's a, a thing that we can have joy in. And so there's my truncated sermon. Good job, you all, for uh, talking so long. Uh, Jack, would you come up? I know that you have some things pre uh, prepared that you want to be able to share with us as well. And if you're watching online, just keep watching. This is going to keep going for a little while. This is so humbling. And um, as, as you know, I have to write out my sermons. And I, I think I needed to write out this too. Uh, just you're reminding me of things that, uh, wow. Wow. Uh, it's been such a privilege to, as I can conclude this ministry role, uh, to fellowship with you and to just want to express appreciation to each of you as a congregation, leadership, uh, these, these many years, Sharon and I, just so blessed. Uh, when we go to pastoral meetings, I just tell them, I am really spoiled. I'm very spoiled by... Uh, this congregation and uh, how good you are to us. You've encouraged us, you've supported us. Uh, we've been through some very challenging times that we've navigated together as well. And the Lord's been faithful and I wanna give him the glory as well. But thank you for the privilege it has been. And I'm not sure what's wrong with the iPad here, but it's, um... there we go. But again, I, I do a written report and i'm sorry i'm kind of stumbling over my words here but again just appreciation to you thank the lord give him the glory and just affirm my personal commitment here to support pastor matt and uh, to uh, ensure a smooth transition pray for god's richest blessing on on each of you on matt emmy jesse all in staff sue our elders leadership team you and the congregation thank you so much for the privilege to serve the lord and, uh, but I really want to transition <laughs> to what's really important now that I've stumbled through that and I have a script for this too and uh, I'll probably hear about this at home <laughs> but uh, this is my side of the story of the life and times of Sharon K. German uh, also McCullough for the last almost 40 years <laughs> I don't think you know about this, do you? Had you guessed? Okay. Anyway, um, Sharon's very special to me and uh, probably more special to you, but uh, it's very, very special. She was born in 1958 to Edward and Alice German 
11 minutes after her twin sister Cheryl and a day apart from their cousin Renee, who's sitting there in the middle. As the twins, they're fraternal. Sharon and Cheryl, her sister, have uh, enjoyed a special relationship through the years. There they are. Was that Ruth's graduation? Okay. There's a story there. She was dating him, but he ended up marrying her. But that's uh, more information than you wanted. I'm glad for that. But, uh, and there they are. I was going to show that picture, but I thought, is that inappropriate? But now there's the, the three of them together at, uh, uh, in, in Lincoln, Nebraska. But uh, anyway, the youngest of, uh, as the youngest of four, Sharon's elementary years were spent in Grand Blank, Michigan. They lived in a big white house that had columns on it. It wasn't this one. <laughs> But I love it. You see the two there, the sisters. I'm not sure what was going on. Am I in trouble for this? <laughs> anyway, um, that's near Flint, Michigan. Okay. <laughs> Her parents taught music in the uh, public schools there, and uh, it was at age 12. It, well, uh, when you, you were baptized at North Baptist Church, is that right? And she had trusted Christ as uh, a younger child. Uh, when Sharon's dad was invited to direct the uh, choir of Booty Bible Institute, the family moved to the Chicago suburb of Lombard, Illinois, where she attended Glenbard East High School. And uh, there's junior high in there somewhere. But uh, her family then moved to Cal Farley's Boys Ranch near Amarillo, Texas, where her father directed the music program. And here she is with Cal Farley himself and one of the boys. Uh, the Boys Ranch School was, as you imagine, at that time was boys only, so Sharon and Cheryl attended Hartley County High School in Channing, Texas, with the largest ever graduating class of 22 students in 1976. And uh, she was very accomplished in things. There's her graduating picture. Pretty cute looking, don't you think? <laughs> anyway. Following high school, Sharon attended Moody Bible Institute, majoring in Bible and theology, and she uh, played the clarinet in the Moody Band, graduating in 1979. Following MBI, she enrolled in it and completed... The, oh, there she is at a, a, a reunion there. So, um, There we go. Following MBI, she enrolled in and completed the Christian Teachers Education Program at Western Bible College, Morrison, Colorado, just about three miles west of here. It used to be then. And uh, where her father headed the music to that. And there, I think that's Adrian House. I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of Juanita's husband. In fact, he's the president. Um, music was always a part of Sharon's life. During her upbringing, Sharon sang with her family, played the guitar, also enjoyed sports as well. She enjoyed summers with her family in her cabin on Green Lake, the National Music Camp at Interlochen, uh, Michigan, near Traverse City. She uh, played the clarinet in the orchestra, worked at the uh, Melody Freeze ice cream shop, as uh, they called it, and enjoyed the beach and the lake, too. That's the beach right in front of the cabin. And, of course, her dad had a boat. I think that's her brother's boat, actually, there. Sharon and I uh, met in 1980 in Denver here, and then in 1981 on tour. She was with the choir. You can see her there on the left. That was in uh, the high school. Uh, they allowed Christian colleges to have concerts in high schools there in Phillips, South Dakota. While on tour there uh, with her dad's choir, Sharon accepted my proposal to become what she said she would never be, and that is a wife. <laughs> we married at Foothills Bible Church. Uh, maybe you recognize that building. It used to be just to the west of us there. And um, that's uh, her dad was serving as the minister of music at the time. Lovely bride. And as a new bride, she can you believe she'd marry someone with a 1971 Toyota Corolla that I bought for $200? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Um, but she uh, joined me there in rural South Dakota where I pastored community churches, a small town of Phillip, population 1,000 or so. And uh, also Milesville, 30 miles north, intersection of two gravel roads. There's her dad and uh, Paul Elsher, a rancher who has since gone to be with the Lord. But uh, then in 1982, Sharon became a second thing. She would never be a radio station manager's wife. And I couldn't find a picture of that A-frame or anything to save my life. But uh, anyway, uh, as we were moving to Denver, she started feeling ill. And uh, Julie <laughs> was born in 1983. Okay, cute baby, and then Joseph came along in 1984. The kids don't know this. <laughs> You're gonna jump spot. 
And then in 1986, Jamie was born. And there's all the three kids. Aren't they cute? <laughs> well, Sharon homeschooled the children for a number of years, uh, became a special teacher with Hewitt Academy, moved on to a Front Range Christian School where she taught Bible and uh, elementary PE for 15 years. There's some pictures there. Basketball team, Jamie was a student there. Uh, Joseph and, uh, and Julie graduated from Chatfield. There's some pictures there. Um, and then in 1993, uh, Pastor Adrian Juanita House with Castlewood Church sent us out with five families. A number of families, uh, several are still here. Of course, Kara Hugo way back when, Denise Williams, some others. Uh, but uh, we are privileged to plant there in conjunction with the district. Then in 2002, we joined with Red Rocks Fellowship, and uh, that's another complete story in itself. We could devote all the time to talking about just the history uh, of the privilege of uh, being for the last 18 years. Full story of God's working. But together, we want to thank you for the privilege it's been. That probably looks familiar to be a part of this church family ever since then. Uh, throughout our 39 years together, Sharon has been a faithful co-worker in ministry by leading and, and or participating in uh, many different facets of church life, music and worship in particular. Our family has grown, and uh, God has blessed us with a daughter-in-law, Athena, married to Joseph, two grandchildren, Theodore and Adelaide, who live in Denver, just some pictures there, Georgetown train, Old Town, Arvada, the uh, Casa Bonita there, and... Uh, some pictures of Joseph and his family. And then our son-in-law, married to Jamie. They live in Chicago. You see Lake Michigan in the background there. And uh, granddaughter Cecilia, first birthday. Here we were at, at, at they came out to visit and went up to the uh, uh, hot dog, whatever it is, by Bailey, you know. Coney Island, Coney Island, there we are, Bear Creek. So anyway. Uh, the last time Sharon and her siblings gathered together, uh, all together, was to move her parents to independent living, and uh, that's in the basement of uh, her parents' home in her dad's office as we were just kind of emptying it out, kind of a sad time with all the roll-offs and everything going on. Um, Dad German went to be with the Lord just this past July, and uh, then we visited Mom German in December, late September, I should say, not December. There she is with her mom. Well, in her spare time, you've heard about that. Sharon certainly enjoys her friends, her dogs. I don't have a picture of her bicycle there. That's actually Julie's dog. But enjoys riding her scooter. That's the old one. This is the one we have now. Just took a picture of that yesterday, finally. And uh, she enjoys a bunch of other things, including skydiving <laughs> once in a while. Okay. So, as we... Uh, Poise on the verge of retirement or transition, soon marked 40 years of marriage. I want to thank the Lord for his invaluable gift to me of Sharon as a wonderful wife, awesome mother and grandmother. I want to honor her for her faithfulness through the varied, ad varied adventures of married life and ministry life and uh, recognize the many sacrifices she has made along the way. Also to affirm you, Sharon, for the wonderful blessing you continue to be in my life, the life of our family, countless others. So thank you both of us for the privilege, from both of us for the privilege to serve Red Rocks Fellowship, and we certainly want to wish you a happy and blessed new year, but I'm not done yet. Do we have the sound up? Is that we ready to go? Okay, well, I'd like to close with a family gathering that we had at a steakhouse in Martin, Missouri, near Kansas City, when Sharon's immediate family, including Cousin Renee, celebrated Dad German's 90th birthday. Yeah, just a minute, almost. <laughs> There's Uncle Bill and Aunt Becky. Let me get my alto voice ready. Okay, <laughs> okay go ahead. Okay. Go. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise
I never realized it, Jack. Those uh, years that you uh, sang in the choir, you probably had to, otherwise you would have been ostracized from the family. Yeah, that must have been rough on you. Yeah. Uh, actually, I want you both to come up here because we're, we're going to um, provide some um, recognition. We'll put it that way. I was going to do this earlier, but I wanted to make sure we had that in before everybody started tuning out uh, on the internet. But uh, um, so let's, um, Denise, or excuse me, actually, Denise is not here. Carrie, are you presenting first? Okay. So, Carrie, why don't you come up? We have a gift for you. And um, Carrie probably also wants to say some things because Carrie likes to say some things. <laughs> a lovely gift. Thank you. Um, little token for you to try to remember us by. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I first met you both. Remember in the daycare we had this little marriage counseling thing. Remember when I was married a long time ago? <laughs> little test. <laughs> That's when we, our hair was darker. <laughs> Kids were younger. But um, it's been a long journey, a great journey. Lost a lot of our good friends. But we're making it. Can't thank you enough. Both of you. Thank you both. Got going. <laughs> that is quite honestly a first, Carrie. The loss for words. Lauren and Lisa, would you come up, if you would, please, together? So after spending the last 363 days wrapping Christmas presents, I didn't wrap yours. <laughs> I was done. Yeah. Um, and then I figured, you know, it would be fun to look through. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to say something because someone cut us off short. So if Carrie can do it, I can do it. Um, <laughs> When we started looking for a church, I really wasn't sure that I wanted to because the church I had gone to was hurtful in a lot of different ways. And I had rules and expectations of how I was supposed to be and I knew I couldn't live up to them. And um, Jeff suggested this church and I said it was too liberal. I told you this earlier. Jeff, this church is probably too liberal for us and too big. and. And he was gracious and waited for me to get my head screwed on right. And then we came, and uh, I will echo that God has blessed you with the memory of being able to remember names. That just humbles me, and I would love to say I can remember every visitor who comes. That's a, that's a goal. That's a, st a benchmark that you've set for all of us to remember our visitors' names. Um, and to make them feel as welcome as you always have. So when you are off riding scooters and, and fishing on boats and visiting the world that we can hopefully just fill a quarter of that gap. Um, but I wanna thank you because you, Jack, have been, um, you, I mean, I come in from, you know, the early days, like, you know, four years ago when I would come in to work with Cubbies and, Pastor Jack, I have this question. And you would just stop whatever you were doing and you'd run in your office and make some coffees and you're like, now read this. This is what you need to read to answer this big theological question you had rumbling in your head. And uh, honestly, not in a disparaging way, but the reason I left the other church was I was told to go back to Bible college. I, the pastor didn't want to take the time to shepherd and educate a girl and you, you willingly did, and that is now something I, we're here, you've, I mean, you've set a standard, and because of your shepherding, it has allowed us to come and now encouraged us to raise our children in the fear and admonition of the Lord, and it's truly because of what you've done. Um, Sharon, a couple years ago, you sent me a card that really, change things for me after a rough time and you know I think sometimes we think we're all just specks on this earth and oh Sharon doesn't know me and Pastor Jack I mean that was just I, who would know me you know who would remember me um, but you 
wrote a very kind card in a dark time and just think, knowing that you said that you were thinking about me in the morning when you went for walks it didn't go unnoticed and it sorry it is just you guys you're so loved and this isn't bon voyage or anything but I mean, we, we could go on and on, and I could tell funny stories about locking you in the bathroom. I don't want to, but I won't do that because I wouldn't want to embarrass you. That would, oh, sorry, whoops. Um, and then just quickly, I, um, I get text messages from people saying, will you please share a story? So it's really quick. I'll read really fast, but because um, they're not here um, due to just being cautious. But this is from Terry and Russell, and Russell um, wanted to let you know that when he was having hip surgery right before they were married, he belonged to his own church. On the day of his surgery, Jack, you came and prayed with them. Um, they were so impressed. His own preacher didn't even come or call. And through this COVID, he calls us to check on us. We love him and thank you so much for everything you do. Um, and Terry echo echoed that with saying that you saw her after she had had her stroke and you had prayed with her in the hospital. And she and Dale are so thankful for all the times that you just you just still make sure that we're okay and I mean during COVID I think we all can if I ask for a show of hands which I'm not but Jack probably called you right Jack called you and made sure you were doing okay and if he didn't I'm sorry um, but uh, yeah I mean you've you've touched lives and I'll probably get five more text messages after this and I'll just forward them on to you but um, so I'm guilty of graffiting the walls with pictures yes. and I wanted to make sure that you were not left without any memories so <laughs> there's some great ones um, um, I'll have another one made up for the church too um, but um, this is an effort from Matt Nita always keeping um, such great records of our history through photos and Donna and I and she's like I don't know if you know this person or did you ever meet Juanita did you ever you probably didn't know Sam and but just all the stories and different in pictures of people in dresses so that picture's in here too because I you know I wanted to make sure you never forgot so that's ugly <laughs> The funny thing is the back picture I thought was, Jeff and I agreed, was suiting for uh, you oh, going, going, to going into retirement. It's yeah. a, I think it was probably the Haiti trip, um, yeah, but he's got a great straw hat on. He's walking, and um, he has an he's icy, a <laughs> he has a, a very uh, coral-colored beverage in his hand. Well, I already talked, so I don't need to talk anymore, but this is something that... I was able to make for you, but then Donna and the ladies, they put it together to make it look even nicer, and Donna told me I'm supposed to tell you to open it here. So, that's that. <laughs> Can we go now? Yes. Oh, cool. Oh, my goodness. You, cool. you got an original elf drop. I mean, that's awesome. Very cool. Thank you. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, go ahead and open that other one too, Jack. Here, you want me to hold it? I can't hold that because you're going to open it. I know, I just don't want to open it. Thank you for blessing Red Rocks Fellowship with humble leadership, heartfelt ministry, and a deep love of the Lord. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Isaiah 43, 19. Oh, Text. cool. That beautiful. is so nice. <laughs> Jim, I'm going to move you to the end. And uh, Anna and Jenny are now rushing because I switched the order. I'm the MC. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Wow. We won't.
wanted to give Sharon flowers, but then we thought maybe she would like a fruit basket instead. And it's probably it's pretty heavy. So and pomegranates. And and Sharon, there's even more fruit in the kitchen. No so way. sorry. Yeah, it's a lot of fruit. So enjoy. So just so Jack won't get too big of a head, um, sh they say behind every great man is a great woman, right? And oh. Well, he'll say it the second time, so you get the message, guys, okay? So anyhow, uh, Sharon, we don't want you to feel kind of left out. Sharon has been, not only is she a jokester, if you don't know her, she really is, but the other part of her is she's behind the scenes, just like Jack. They try to keep a low profile, and yet they are servants. But we want you to, to wear this with pride, so you have to take it out. <laughs> Uh, do, do I you? trust you? <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 it fits. It fits. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it says, I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> Well, I can say honestly that uh, I can't do ministry without the support of my wife, and I know that Jack feels the same way. So you are kind of a big deal, uh, very much so. Uh, Jim, if you would come. And uh, actually, uh, Paul, why don't you come up as well? And Grant, any, actually, anybody that wants to pray over them, come on up, because that'll be right at the end of Jim's presentation. Last and least. I've been chosen to uh, give you a token of appreciation from the entire congregation who have contrib contributed financially to a, a gift, financial gift to you guys, so that all of them, those who can't be here and those that are here, all of us, could have a small part in saying thank you to two of you that have been such a big part of our lives and so important to us. And uh, we look forward to the day when we'll be celebrating our Lord together around his throne. And that'll be the ultimate reward. And uh, we so look forward to that. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, we can have you move up here because unfortunately this is the only mic that's going to be good enough to capture all of this. So I, I just want to take a moment to thank you all. As uh, I try not to cry here, as uh, Jack said, I, I left Moody Bible Institute, uh, and I was really happy that I didn't marry a pastor, and um, and I ended up long st long story short, I did, and I knew it was God's leading, and uh, you know, I God knew already that He would give me the best congregation uh, that would make it quite easy to be a pastor's wife. Um, you've all loved and supported me and allowed me to use whatever gifts or talents I had in, in uh, a way that I thought God was leading and never put pressure on me. And I have felt the love and support from all of you. I, I, sometimes I would go to uh, retreats and pastor's wives would get together and they would really, it was really hard on them. They would talk about real hard things and I'd sit there going, oh, I gotta come up with something. <laughs> I can't, what am I gonna say? And I, I just had the best congregation, and I want you to know that all these years I have felt that, and I appreciate your support, and, and I want to charge you now uh, to uh, do the same for Jenny. Uh, she has wonderful gifts and talents, and um, uh, God will use her here and be exactly what this church needs. And uh, I appreciate you letting me be who I am, and I know you'll do the same for Jenny. So. Uh, Thank you again, and we love you all. Thank you. Um, so this is what we want to do. We want to pray over you and commission you into the next stage of life because uh, you are being commissioned to go out. We don't stop being disciples. We st don't stop making disciples no matter what stage of life we find ourselves in, and that's a principle that I definitely want my kids to know. 
and uh, so I want to practice that here with you as well. So uh, I'm going to open it up, um, and, and um, to anybody that wants to pray, um, I don't know if Corona allows us to touch them or not, um, but I think we should put it, to, to, should lay hands on Jack and Sharon and, um, and then pray over them. So uh, let's do that. I will open, and then I'll open it up to you, anybody that wants to pray, and then, uh, and then we'll close together. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for Jack and Sharon. I thank you for the blessing that they've been in my life and my family's life. And shoot, I didn't think I was going to do this. Um, Lord, I am so excited. I'm so excited for what you have in store for them as a, as a new thing that you're doing for them and uh, through them and new people that will be blessed because of what you're doing. And uh, uh, Jack gets the opportunity to, to do some pulpit fill and sh share his gifts with other congregations and other places um, and be here as well. And so, Lord, we thank you that we get to be a home base as a, as a singing church for, uh, as it were, a pulpit missionary. And uh, it's pretty exciting. And uh, for Sharon to, to have a community that, um, that she is still a part of, but also can um, be a part of another community as well. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, just bless them on their journey as you have through this wonderful time that we've been with us. Lord, for all that has been, we say thank you, and for all that will be, we say yes, and we look forward to the new things that you are going to be doing in and through Jack and Sharon's life. We thank you for sharing them with us. Thank you, Father, for making this transition straight and smooth and providing your countenance and your blessing continued on their lives. Thank you that you, Father, you, Jesus, you, Holy Spirit, have allowed your light to shine through this couple and touch so many lives mm -hmm. and encourage so many souls. Indeed, heaven will be much richer because of your ministry through these two. And we pray that that ministry would not only continue but also flourish in the days ahead, that you would be lifted up, that you would be glorified, and that not one of those that you've called to yourself would be lost, but that you would use these two to continue to reach out, to touch, to encourage, to speak into their lives your truth, your word. Lord, we pray that you will guide them into this new phase of their life, as Matt said earlier, that you're doing a new thing, that you'll open new doors for them, and that you'll continue to use them in a mighty way. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for their service to us. Thank you for um, being our leaders in our congregation. We're looking forward to see what new future God holds for them, and we can walk along the side of them. Hmm. Lord, we thank you for the promise that we have in your word that says that you have begun a good work in us and that you will complete it. And we look forward to the completion of all of the work that you're doing uh, one day, the, the culmination and the consummation in heaven. But uh, at this moment, at this time, Lord, we are so thankful for two people that you blessed our lives with that, that worked so hard to fill us and to uh, train us and to equip us so that we could take on uh, your gospel uh, to the next generation and the next generation. Lord, we pray that you would bless their ministries, bless their lives as they continue on serving you in whatever capacity you see fit. We thank you again for the blessing that you have provided us through them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you. Well, we're going to let our worship team close us out because I don't have any more words, um, but I'm going to give them a chance to get set up. Um, we will uh, be planning another celebration at some point because, doggone it, we paid a deposit and we can't get it back. Um, <laughs> so there will be another celebration at some point whenever Corona allows us to meet together again. So uh, look forward to to those times together. Emmy, if you're, are you, get, get your ears in. Um, thank you so much. Well, I think 
Is this on? Okay. I'm, it's not in my ears, but that's okay. As long as it's, uh, as long as you can hear me. Okay. I'm going to pull this out so I can hear myself. Uh, our hearts are full. And, oh, that's the trick. Yeah, you got it. There's too much to plug in. Joseph, did you have this much before? You did. Okay. All right. But you had youth on your side. <laughs> I'm getting old. Um, my heart is full. I think all of our hearts are full. We're, we're full of the thankfulness of God's graciousness, his faithfulness, using a wonderful servant like Jack and Sharon. And you realize that what we do here today, right now, is very important because God has commanded us to honor those who have served faithfully. And by doing that, we bless our Heavenly Daddy. We're saying, good job, Dad. You provided us with a great leader. And so let's thank, ultimately, our Heavenly Father by standing and singing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is Thy Faithfulness God bless you all.